And so, Tourism Minister Lindiwe Sisulu is consulting her lawyers after a stinging rebuke by the Acting Chief Justice over her opinion piece. The minister says she had noted Zondo's comments and will engage with them at an appropriate time in an appropriate platform. In a tweet, Sisulu said she is consulting her legal team on the way forward, but she later deleted that post. In her short reply to the address by the Acting Chief Justice, she did not say whether she will withdraw and apologize to African judges whom Zondo said were insulted by her opinion piece. Government has distanced itself from the opinion piece, describing it as reckless utterances. And much has been said about this matter. Let's hear now from Chris Ox Toby, Senior Research Officer for Democratic Governance and Rights Unit in the Department of Public Law at the University of Cape Town. Chris, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. So much has been said and much has been thought of about this. I'd like to get, first of all, your opinion on everything that we have heard so far. Oh, thanks very much. So I think I think it's a it's an unfortunate um, episode. I I don't think I don't think the the original op-ed uh, was uh, was called for really in terms of the the criticisms that uh, that it contained of the judiciary. I think as the as the acting chief justice alluded to, I don't think they were they were well substantiated. Um, I think the judiciary perhaps sometimes becomes uh, becomes seen as an easy target for some of these uh, these political attacks. Um, so I think I think that was unfortunate. I can I think I think the response from uh, from Justice Zondo was um, correct in terms of the points it raised. Whether it was the, the the best approach to have taken in the circumstances, I'm I'm less convinced that it was necessarily a good idea. For that uh, public statement to have come out of the judiciary itself, um, because as you as you've alluded to, there have been a lot of uh, responses to the opinion piece um, already defending the judiciary and, and, and criticising it. Whether it was in that context necessary for the judges themselves to enter into the fray, um, I, yeah, I, th I think there's a there's a question mark um, over that, and of course that's going to be contrasted with the. Um, uh, the, the considerably uh, longer silence from the, the judicial leadership when um, the judiciary was being attacked um, in the middle of uh, in the middle of last year of all the controversy about uh, former president Zuma. So I, I I think it's uh, I think it's unfortunate. I think the criticisms are very much unfounded and and unsubstantiated. Um, I'm I'm just slightly concerned about the the wisdom of uh, of an official uh, judiciary response to this. Mm. And on that point, uh, you say it's not necessarily, perhaps it wasn't necessarily a good idea to have responded. What do you perceive the other option would have been? Well, I think in a context where you have, um, you know, responses coming, as you, as you alluded to, from the, the minister in the presidency uh, distancing, um, the, you know, government from the, the opinion piece, you had the spokesperson for the Minister of Justice writing a very <coughs> eloquent uh, rebuttal uh, to the opinion piece, which came out um, very shortly thereafter. Uh, you know, one sort of feels that the the case was uh, was made at that point. Um, now, perhaps, uh, perhaps the uh, you know the, the judiciary could have written formally to to the presidency or to um, Chief Whip or to whatever appropriate. Um, uh, you, you know, official um, in government, they they felt necessary and raised concerns about it. Um, I'm, I'm worried that by responding in the public domain like this, the judiciary starts getting drawn into political debates, which is not really the kind of arena where traditionally and naturally, uh, you know, the judiciary finds itself most comfortable. And I, I'm just slightly concerned about the prospect of more of this kind of thing happening in the future. And the, uh, the the comment being made when the judiciary pushes back, people might well say, "No, but you've you've, you've entered into the this arena mm -hmm. by making these kind of statements, so you must then expect there to be counter criticisms um, of you." Um, having said which, I'm, you know, judges are only human, and I can very much understand the uh, the feeling that they they would have uh, felt that a response was needed. I think the the criticisms were were highly problematic and were not well substantiated. Um, so I, I can understand the impulse to do it. I just wonder, especially given that this was a, this was a comment by, by one minister seemingly on her own in one opinion piece, 
Um, it wasn't a case, as we've sometimes seen in the past, where there were multiple uh, you know, government officials climbing on the bandwagon or multiple senior political figures um, you know, the, the contributing to, uh, to criticisms and attacks uh, of the judiciary. Um, and in that context, I just wonder if um, something perhaps more behind the scenes uh, would have been appropriate and if uh, perhaps leaving some of the, the rebuttals to um, other people, uh, given that those, those rebuttals have, uh, have come in and the judiciary has been defended very strongly from, from many quarters, perhaps it wasn't necessary for an official um, response of this nature. Right. Uh, I wonder, Chris, whether it's what was said or it's how it was uh, said or dealt with or how it was responded to that was the problem. She also makes mention of the Constitution and questions certain aspects. So how should we understand uh, South Africa's Constitution and its contribution to the countless number of people in this country? Yeah, I think... It's, it's, it's a very important question because obviously the country faces an enormous amount of, of, of challenges. And I think, you know, at its heart, I think, you know, the minister is correct to raise the, the issues of economic inequality that the, the op-ed uh, did. Um, I think the problem is, is that far too much of that gets uh, laid at the door of the Constitution without taking um, into account um, other factors, the, 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 comment, uh, the comment that was made in, in one of the responding op-eds, the Constitution is not self-executing. In other words, the Constitution on its own um, doesn't, uh, doesn't, create, uh, doesn't create changes. You need people to, to implement policies and to take action in terms of the Constitution in order to, to address these problems. And I, I personally, maybe it's an idealistic view, but I personally tend to take the uh, the view that uh, taking into account the, the very significant uh, challenges that we have and where we've come from, that the Constitution has been extremely important, um, especially if you consider the socio-economic rights uh, jurisprudence that's come out of that court. I think, uh, I think the Constitution and the courts who've interpreted it have played a very, very important role in um, trying, to, trying to address those challenges. But it does, uh, with respect, seem, seem rather strange for a sitting cabinet minister with no apparent reflection on uh, the, the role of other parts of, of government and the political infrastructure in, in dealing or failing to deal with these issues, uh, to, to seemingly uh, lay the blame for slow progress of economic change on the Constitution and the judiciary alone, without providing any evidence for how the, um, you know, how the, how the law has, has fallen short in this respect. Um, I thought that was a, that was a problematic um, aspect of the, of the opinion piece. Um, and I think it's, it, it does fuel a narrative where I think the Constitution uh, sometimes gets blamed for, uh, for too much um, and for too many of our, our, our difficulties that we face. Chris, thank you so much for availing yourself this afternoon. Chris Ox Toby is the Senior Research Officer for Democratic Governance and um, Rights Unit at the Department of Public Law, University of Cape Town.